Science. I, I have a bachelor's degree from the U.S., uh, Furman University in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, and uh, then I did some further studies uh, at the Sorbonne in France uh, and at the College of Europe in Bruges. And then eventually I got my PhD from the London School of Economics. But it was all international relations. But my big driver in whatever I've been doing um, in my fairly mature life, in other words, after I turned 21, has somehow been linked to values, to, to, to peace, to fundamental rights, human rights. You know, having this sort of convoluted idea that you know, we can improve the world. So for me, the field that I'm talking about today is, is not uh, foreign in a sense, but different. I, I, I'm not a scientist. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not fantastic with numbers. I, I don't understand how an algorithm works. I understand that it has to be coded, but I mean, if someone asked me to do it, I'd be completely clueless. So in many ways, I'm a, I'm a student of the subject that I'm going to talk about. And instead of defining it only narrowly tonight as artificial intelligence, I'd like to look at it a bit more broadly and talk about perhaps the digital revolution, or what some people call the fourth industrial revolution. And for me, that entails artificial intelligence, robotization, digitalization, 3D printing, Internet of Things, machine learning, um, fluid ink printing, uh, and the rest of it. So, so it's a much broader uh, term. And what I will do is, is give a brief introduction, and then I will have my customary three points, yeah? And then I will give a conclusion. So that way I'll keep things in my head as well. And the three points I will have is the impact, number one, of the digital revolution on the economy. Two, the impact of the digital revolution on politics. And three, the impact of the digital revolution on science. And I'll try to draw some conclusions from all of this when I, when I uh, end out. And I'll, I'll also, I mean, for those of you who might take notes or whatever, I'll, I'll throw in a few books on the way that, that have sort of spurred on my thinking in, in the subject. I've been a student of the subject, I'd say, only three years, really. I, I started at, at the World Economic Forum in Davos about 2015. That's when I got excited about the subject and, and felt that, you know, shit, here I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of prime minister and I, I, I'm, I'm clueless about this stuff. And it's really going to have a huge impact. Now, by way of introduction, um, I turned 50 this year. Yeah? I know I look much younger. <laughs> so, I, I, and, and, and a friend of mine, I said, ah, it's great. You know, think about what was the world like in 1968. And my friend said, no, no, Alex, it's, it's, who cares? Look at, back at 50 years before you were born. Reflect on that. Then go to 1968 and then come to 2018. And then move forward to 2068. Now, 1980, let's think big. What was the main mode of transport here in Helsinki? No, horse and carriage, right? Yeah? Cool. That's only 100 years ago. Horse and carriage. What do we do today? Don't you find it a bit absurd that we transport the horses in cars? And if it's a sophisticated car, it uses biodiesel. And if it's sophisticated biodiesel, it probably has horse shit in it, right? So in 100 years, we moved from a idea that horses transport us to us transporting horses. And of course, a lot of things have happened in between. So what I want you to do is to think, you know, way beyond how, how will things change 50 years from now. One of you will be here talking to students. Will you have come here with a car yourself? Probably. Will human beings be allowed to drive cars anymore? Probably not. You will not be allowed to have a driver's license, which is good because I'll be 100 at the time. So it, it, it wouldn't be good. So what I want you to think about is that I, I think we're right now in the midst of a digital revolution, uh, which is enormous. And as I said, fourth industrial revolution. The first industrial revolution brought with it Marxism. Yeah? The fourth industrial revolution is going to be 10, 50, 100 times bigger. Okay, to kick off, then number one is the impact of the digital revolution uh, on the economy. Uh, the best book I've read on this is by uh, 
Andrew McAfee and Eric Brynjolfsson. They are from the MIT. And they wrote a book called, uh, uh, it was called Machine, Platform and Crowd. Before that they had wrote a book uh, on artificial intelligence, on uh, machines in general, which was also, I think, a good kickoff. But this was a good on the economy. And their thesis was quite simple. They said, look, the way in which we do business, the way in which we uh, augment the size of the economy, the way in which we work is going to change. First of all, machines are starting to replace the human brain, human brain power in complicated calculations. Okay, we all kind of know that, right? But the idea is that the brain versus the machine type of balance is there all the time. Second, platforms. Business used to be easy, right? You would basically have a service or a product and then you would refine it, market it and sell it. But look at the biggest businesses in the world right now. Aren't many of them platforms? Facebook is a platform. It doesn't own any content. It likes to distribute the content data, but you know, it doesn't own it. Secondly, Airbnb doesn't own any real estate. Uber doesn't really own cars. 